Hello YouTubes, welcome back to Tally's Marine Tales. For those who don't know, my name is Chantelle and I am a marine biologist. Now, I don't know how much attention you guys usually pay to the news, but there's been a recent flurry of activity surrounding the terms COVID-19 vaccine and shark squalene. Now, I'm essentially a shark biologist, so I like to keep tabs of what's happening in the shark world and what's happening in the conservation world. And my social media feed has been blown up with the headline, half a million sharks could be killed for a COVID-19 vaccine. But as a scientist, you usually learn to take things with a pinch of salt. So I decided to do a bit of digging, see what was behind this claim, what these articles were saying and what the heck was going on. So we'll talk a little bit about the COVID-19 vaccine world, what's happening. We'll chat about sharks and what the heck squalene is, how these two things go together. And then I'll end off with my opinion about whether I think half a million sharks are going to be killed for a COVID-19 vaccine. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm not going to talk about what COVID is. We all know that the whole world has been living and breathing, literally, COVID-19 for almost the whole year, and we all know how serious it is. And ever since it became clear that this was going to be a global epidemic that no travel ban could stop, the scientific community began their race to find a COVID-19 vaccine. Now, this is a seriously fast-tracked process. What usually takes scientists 10 years is happening over the scale of months, even one to two years. So this is all happening very quickly. Even here in South Africa, we've begun a phase three trial of one of the front runner vaccines for COVID-19, which essentially means it's in the last scientific phase and they test the vaccine on a large portion of the population to see if it is safe and effective. Now, according to the latest statistics that I could find on the World Health Organization's website, there are currently 169 COVID vaccine um, candidates and 26 of these are in the human trial phase. Now, where the heck do sharks come into the picture? You'd think that at first glance, there's no logical connection between the sharp toothed things that swim in the ocean and a global human health epidemic. However, it all boils down to this chemical called squalene. Now, fun fact, well, it is a popular myth that sharks need to keep swimming in order to keep breathing. There are many lazy shark species that will sit at the bottom of the ocean floor, not swimming, but still happily gulping away oxygen and water. It is true to say that sharks need to keep swimming in order to keep buoyant. Unlike normal fish, they lack a gas bladder, which is filled with gas to help the fish stay buoyant. Sharks don't have this. They instead have a very big liver that is very rich in oil, specifically a chemical compound called squalene. And this is slightly less dense than water, which helps the sharks to stay somewhat buoyant. Now, in a medicinal context, squalene is what is known as an adjuvant, which simply means for some reason, scientists still quite haven't figured out yet. When it is added to a vaccine, it makes the vaccine more potent and it elicits a stronger immune response in the patient. The word adjuvant actually comes from the Latin word adjuve, which means to help. Now, squalene isn't the only type of adjuvant out there, but it is used by one of the big pharmaceutical companies called GlaxoKindSmith in their flu vaccines. Now, bringing all of this together, this story seemed to originate from two sources a Sky News article and a shark conservationist group called Shark Allies. Now, according to the Sky News article, there are some COVID-19 vaccine candidates that use the squalene-based adjuvant. And the big pharmaceutical company, GlaxoSmithKline, had told Sky News that they had committed to producing 1 billion doses of this squalene-based adjuvant for use in the coronavirus vaccines by May. That's when the shark conservationist group got on board and they ran the numbers. And they said that if you need two and a half thousand to three and a half thousand sharks to make one ton of squalene, and if every person on the globe got a coronavirus vaccine, then you would need to kill 250,000 sharks to produce that much squalene. And if every person needed a follow-up dose, which seems likely, then you arrive at the number of half a million sharks being killed for a COVID-19 vaccine. Now, that may seem like a big number, but one also has to consider that already 100 million sharks are killed every year for various purposes. And this number came from a very comprehensive study that was published all the way back in 2013. And these researchers calculated that this number of sharks equates to roughly 7% of the total sharks in the ocean. So we're killing 7% of sharks every year. Now, you might look at me and think, that actually doesn't sound like too much. 
But the problem is sharks are very vulnerable to overexploitation. They take a really long time to reach sexual maturity, a number of years usually, and they only produce a few number of offspring. So the researchers took this into account and they ran some models and they showed that if you kill anything over the 5% mark, then you're overexploiting sharks. So essentially we are killing sharks faster than they can replace themselves. Now, one mustn't get too caught up in the numbers because these are really just big generalizations. But the take home message is that sharks are in trouble. We are on and past the cusp of killing sharks in a sustainable manner. And now if you want to add an extra half a million sharks to be killed for the COVID vaccine, you're just compounding this problem. Now, do I think that half a million sharks are going to be killed for the coronavirus vaccine? I don't think so. I think this is somewhat sensationalism. According to the World Health Organization, only five of the 169 vaccine candidates use squalene. And I think that even if one of these squalene based vaccines is successful and makes it to the market, I think it's going to be one of many available on the market. So I don't think every person is going to need a vaccine that uses squalene. However, on the flip side of the coin, it seems to be that whatever vaccine becomes successful will need to be administered on a yearly basis, given the evidence that a human's immunity to the coronavirus fades over time. So there really needs to be a focus on sustainable solutions for the coronavirus vaccine. And using squalene from shark livers is definitely not one of them. And the most frustrating part of the story is that there are sustainable sources of squalene. There are many plants that produce squalene, things like yeast, sugarcane, bacteria, olive oil, even possibly some algae. In fact, there's a company based in California called Amaris who have said that they would be able to produce enough squalene for a billion doses of vaccine in one month using sugarcane, which is obviously a much more sustainable solution than using sharks. Now the big problem is if you start developing a drug using a compound from a specific source, say for example squalene from a shark, then you can't just all of a sudden halfway down the line decide you want to switch to using squalene from a sustainably sourced sugarcane plantation. Because even though they are exactly the same compound chemically, if they come from a different source, then you have to start your whole process again and reevaluate your drug from the beginning. Well, at least these are the rules according to the FDA in the United States of America. So why don't companies focus on using sustainably sourced squalene from the beginning? It all comes down to money, as it always does. Squalene that comes from poorly regulated shark fisheries in developing nations is much cheaper. Now, this could open up a whole debate of how developed nations are using developing nations for their unsustainable but cheaper resources but we're not going to get into that i'm going to skirt around the issue and i'm just going to end off with a concluding thought the covid 19 epidemic has been truly truly tragic it has now cost 1 million people their lives it has cost countless numbers their livelihoods and quite frankly the global economy has gone to now coronavirus is also going to be with us for many many years still to come so given this big problem and this long-term problem, why are we even entertaining the idea of using an unsustainable resource in the vaccine to try and fix the problem? Surely this problem deserves much more than this incredibly short-sighted thinking. And on that note, I'm going to end off this video and I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. If this is something you feel passionate about and you want to take action or do something, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to a petition that you can sign to get these companies to stop using shark-based squalene in their vaccine because this is actually a much bigger problem than I could talk about in these few minutes. But if it's something you are interested in, please go sign the petition and share this video with any of your friends or your family who you think might also be interested. And until next time, thank you for watching and stay healthy.